What's up guys? As you can see, my shed is quite a mess right now. Uh, I've been doing quite a bit of work to the Kubota. There's parts and pieces everywhere. I got the uh, exhaust manifold cover plate there. I got my hood, my headlights are there. I've got pipe laying around. I got my muffler out. I've got my muffler bracket out, my bonnet. I just got parts and nuts and bolts scattered all over the shop. Doesn't look quite the same anymore, does it? It's missing quite a bit of pieces and it's got a big pipe sticking out of it. <laughs> I'll go into a little more detail about that later. I have a, a few different mods I'm gonna be doing to the tractor um, coming up in the next couple videos. I have a few parts that I ordered for the tractor that should be here uh, either Monday or Tuesday. So there'll be more videos to come on some of the mods that I'm doing to the tractor. Today the job at hand is the HST pedal. Um, right now I'm not getting a ton of reverse speed. I looked underneath to see if the linkage uh, had come loose because um, I know that that is a reported problem on these tractors and my linkages are tight. Um, I think what it is is just over time these pedals get a little bit of slop in them. I mean I have I have 648 hours on this tractor so you know it's get it's it's starting to get up there and you know over time these pedals just start getting some slop in them um it's not really the tractor's fault it's just wear and tear um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust the hst pedal stop it's a bolt that stops the travel of the pedal um in both forward and reverse and this is how you would adjust your speed what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust them bolts all the way down so that i have the most amount of travel for both reverse and forward speed having a little more speed is always a good thing anyway so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, if you have a problem like this where you're starting to lose speed on your Kubota, um, first thing you want to check is the linkages. So let me get underneath and I'm going to show you guys what to check first. And if all your linkages are tight, I'll show you guys what to do next. Okay, so as I move the pedal back and forth, you can see that pet, those pedals are connected to a rod that goes through the frame. I know it's tough to see, but there's a rod up there that goes through the frame. And when you grease it, there's that grease fitting. What it's doing is it's greasing that, that rod that goes through the frame and that keeps the pedal travel smooth, okay? So after that rod goes through the frame, it goes to this bracket that you're looking at right now. And then it goes to a shock dampener. So there's a dampener right here. As you can see, there's the shock shaft. My boot is torn. It's a common problem on these. Um, so that dampener, what it does is it just dampens the pedal and allows it to come back and retract at, in a, at a smooth pace so that you're not abruptly stopping. Um, if you notice you let off your HST pedal in either direction and you notice your tractor is abruptly stopping, you're gonna wanna replace that, um, that shock dampener. It's fairly easy, there's just a couple pins to pull and it'll drop out of there and you install the new one. Um, as I said before, if you're starting to lose speed, you're gonna wanna check these linkages. So here's a linkage here. Now this is what the pedals in the bracket is pulling on. So it's pulling on this linkage and when you push forward, it actually pushes that lever forward on the transmission. And when you pull backwards or go in reverse, it pulls on that lever, which pulls on the lever on the transmission. And the nut that usually comes loose, if I can get you guys on it. See, so as you can see, this, this lever goes all the way back to the HST on the right side of the tractor. Okay, there's your transmission filter and right there as you can see there's the filter okay so right against between the filter and the frame rail up there you'll see the linkage now that nut on the linkage is what normally will loosen up and when that loosens up you're basically creating a bunch of play and you're losing all your travel on your uh, linkage so you're going to want to check that nut first make sure that nut is tight mine is tight my linkages all seem pretty tight um, you know, they all have a little bit of slop in them, you know, and like I said, I think that's just general wear and tear over time. This tractor's been worked really hard. I've taken it on a lot of jobs. I got some excess grease right there from greasing that pedal. Drips down. That's all that is. But yeah, I've worked this tractor really hard and, uh, you know, this, this kind of stuff happens. Yeah, over time, things just start to loosen up. You get a little bit of play in all these parts and these joints and uh, the linkages and whatnot. And I think that's all that's happened here. Um, it's not dramatically, I, I don't have a dramatic problem. I mean, it still goes pretty fast in reverse, but I've noticed it slowed down a little bit over time. Um, so I just wanted to, while I had some free time today, I wanted to get under here and check it out. Um, and like I said, I didn't find anything loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the, uh, the pedal stops 
and allow the pedal to have more travel in both forward and reverse. So let me get back up front where I can show you guys those. Okay, here is your pedal stops. You got, it's a 13 millimeter bolt head with a 12 millimeter nut. Okay, and you got one here too, 13 millimeter bolt head with a 12 millimeter nut. And they're just mounted to this bracket here that's welded to the frame. So now as I push the pedal forward, there's a, there's a stopper on the, on the side of the arm that stops on the top of that bolt head. Okay, so that limits the travel going forward. So what you wanna do is if you wanna adjust forward speed, you adjust the forward um, bolt. And what you wanna do is bring this bolt as far down as you can, and that'll allow this pedal to travel further down, giving you more speed. Um, same thing for reverse. If you wanna, uh, you wanna adjust the reverse speed, speed it up or slow it down. If you wanna speed it up, you wanna tighten that bolt inward so it's flush with this, this bracket here, and that'll allow your reverse pedal to come down farther, which again will give you more speed. So let me get a 12 millimeter ratchet and a 13 millimeter wrench and adjust these. Okay, so the bolt is a 13 millimeter. So you get your 13 millimeter wrench up top. Get your ratchet on the bottom. Oh my God, that's tight. Okay, I just broke loose the bottom nut and the fucking camera falls over. Okay, so I got that nut loose. So I'm gonna loosen it up and then I'm gonna bring this bolt down as far as I can get it. Tighten your nut back up. Okay, and now, as you can see, I got more travel on my forward speed. That should help out a lot. It doesn't take much adjustment to make quite a big difference. So if you're doing this, you might want to just do it in small increments and test it first. For me, I don't really care. I just want the most speed I can get. Uh, it doesn't really bother me if it's too quick or not because I'll just limit my travel on my foot. So, Okay, now we'll do the reverse pedal. Break this knot loose. Man, they're really tight. <clears throat> Back the nut off all the way. Put your 13 millimeter wrench on the top of the bolt. Tighten it down. <clears throat> okay. Snug my nut back up. Now let's check the reverse. That's much better. I can tell it's a lot more travel now. Let's see if I can get you guys in closer. Now you can see the stopper. It's a little metal uh, paw off the end of the, um, the pedal. And that's what stops on the top of the, the bolt head. So that's a lot, I'm getting a lot more travel out of that now. Okay, so that's done. That's an easy, a quick, easy fix. For anybody who's got a slow HST pedal, like I just did, and then at the end, you're gonna wanna grease it, because the more grease you have in that, it's gonna, it's gonna limit the amount of slop and the amount of play that's in this pedal here. It's gonna help the side-to-side -side motion when you pack it with grease, so definitely keep that grease at all times. A lot of people always forget about that. And it's underneath this little flap here. It's underneath this little flap. You gotta make sure you keep it greased. 
because that's what causes all this this plate which mine isn't too bad because i always keep it greased there's a little bit of side to side play but if that gets real out of hand then you're gonna have to replace the whole linkage and that won't be fun or cheap so okay now that that's done i can talk to you guys a little bit about my upcoming plans for the tractor you see this piece of inch and a half pipe coming out from the engine bay i'm actually going to try to put a stack on a kubota bx um i more or less just want to do it just to see if you know it's possible i've never seen a stack pipe on a kubota bx before um it's kind of killing me i kind of want to see one with one so i figured why not do my own um <laughs> it may be really stupid i may hate it and i may just take it off right away um but at least i could say i did it and i tried it out you know so if i end up liking it maybe i'll keep it if you guys hate it you can let me know how much you hate it if you like it tell me that you like it that is why this piece of metal is sticking out because i am kind of mocking up where the stack is going to be coming through the hood um as you can see the muffler is out i have the muffler over here which i am trying to mock up how exactly i'm going to come off the muffler with a 90 degree angle or a couple 45s so that i could come off the side because the clearance in here is very very tight the stock exit pipe coming out of the muffler comes out the side right over here right where this notch is it comes out this way through the through the uh the hood bonnet um so what i'm gonna have to do is cut that off flush and come out this way with a 90 okay and then i'm gonna have to attach it to the stack pipe and run it up through the hood and it all seems real easy when you're looking at it like this but when that bonnet is on there that bonnet comes real close so I don't want the stack too close and I don't need the elbow too close to that bonnet because it's going to melt the bonnet. So I got to keep my distance at least a half inch I'm thinking um, from the bonnet so that it doesn't get the bonnet so hot that it melts it. I also got to keep the stack away from the intake tube and I still may, may build a shield here if I end up leaving the stack on there and liking it. I may build some kind of a shield on one, one or the other here whether it's the exhaust or the intake tube. That way I can shield it from the heat but I've seen other tractors with the stack this close if not closer to the intake tube um, or a, like a radiator hose and I've never seen a problem so I don't think this distance would be fine I just wouldn't want to get it any closer if I can help it so I'm kind of struggling with getting the perfect placement um, in my head and, and kind of trying to mock all this out of how I want to do everything um, like I said I got to pretty much be dead center between the frame here the hood bonnet the muffler, which is right here, so I don't have very much room to 90 off of it. It's gonna be a very tight and a very short 90. And then I also got this intake pipe. So you're trying to straddle three or four different things and come up right in the center of it all. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the stack short of the hood. So when the hood is closed, the stack will be just below it. And that's where I'm gonna cut it. And then what I'm gonna do is have like a, uh, another piece that comes through the hood to connect to this. And it's gonna be a slip joint. So basically the top stack will come through the hood and slide directly over the piece that's cut just below the hood. So when I need to lift the hood up, I just take the stack, the top half, slide it off, and I can pop the hood open. And when I wanna close the hood, I close the hood and just grab the top of the stack and slip it back over the existing piping that's below the hood. Um, so that's how it's gonna go. And I think the placement is good because it makes sense. If you look at a lot of other tractors, it's usually on the left or the right side. It's, you know, it's either usually up against the cab or it's kind of out front usually not all the way out front but they're like either just below midway or just above midway of the engine so i think this placement is pretty good and as you can see it looks i mean it looks about right it's kind of hard to tell without the hood and the bonnet on but the placement to me looks like it's got a good placement that looks exactly where a stack should go if this tractor were to have a stack i think it would probably sound kind of nice uh, these tractors are very quiet, which Kubota did an excellent job making these things a quiet running tractor. Um, but for me, I don't really care so much about it being that quiet. I'm not talking to people when I'm working with this thing. You know, when I'm working it, I'm working it. If I got to talk to somebody, I usually just shut it off or it's idling and I walk away from it. So I'm not too worried about if it's a little louder. I actually hope it's a little bit louder. Um, you know, give it a little bit more of a tough sound to it. Um, I really like the way these Yan the Yanmar sound and the John Deere 1 series. They got a lot, uh, a beefier sound to them. And it's all in the exhaust system in the way that they've made the exhaust. Kubota has made their exhaust with better baffling and it's, you know, so it's quieter. But I, I truly do like the way the Yanmar sounds better, especially when it's lugging. Uh, it's just got that, that meaner, tougher diesel sound. And that's kind of what I'm after here. 
Um, whether or not it'll make that big of a difference, I am still gonna use pretty much an OEM muffler. Um, this muffler is out, but I'm just using it for mock-up right now. I bought a second muffler off of eBay, um, and it's an aftermarket muffler, so I'm hoping that it doesn't have as good of the baffling you know, technology as Kubota used. Like, this is a really heavy, I mean, this muffler is heavy and thick. I'm assuming the aftermarket one I bought, it was half the price. I'm assuming it's going to be a little bit cheaper, which probably isn't going to baffle and quiet it down as good, which is what I'm looking for. Um, but the reason I bought another muffler mainly was so that if I don't like the stack um, or things don't go to plan, worst case scenario, I throw a $40 muffler away and I just grab my old OEM muffler and I bolt it back in place and no harm, no foul. I'm out 40 bucks. Who cares? You know, in my opinion, it's $40. It's worth the effort to try to put a stack on it just for the fun of it, just to see if it's possible and just to have possibly the first Kubota BX with a stack. Um, I just think it'd be kind of neat to do and pretty neat to try it. So so that's what's going on as far as that goes and the pipe sticking out of the tractor. Um, the next thing that I'm going to be working on, I have a fuel bowl and water separator that I bought for this and that should be here Monday or Tuesday as well. Um, it's a legitimate Kubota and it's off of their L-Series tractors. It's the one that most people use when they do this mod. Um, the bowl is probably going to be I don't know, three inches around and probably four or five inches tall. So it's got, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna be mounting it here near the loader frame. Whether or not I use it, I might use this bolt here on the top of the loader frame or I might use this bolt here, which is basically a clamp that holds this hydraulic line right here um, against the frame. So I may use this or I may use this top bolt here. And basically I'm just gonna get a, a two by two piece of angle iron and lay it over top and then I'm gonna drill my hole so that I can mount my uh, filter housing to it. Um, water separator, whatever you wanna call it. And then from there, I'm gonna have the, the lines coming off of it and they're gonna get routed on the inside here where they're safe. And I'm gonna be deleting the OEM lift pump filter that comes off the tank and goes into the lift pump. Cause that thing is a son of a gun to get at. It's in a terrible spot. Anytime you got to change it, it's just a, you got to lay in the dirt and it's just not a good filter to begin with. I mean, it's, it clogs up really easily. It gels up really easy because there's just not a lot of room inside of it. So yeah, I'm going to be deleting that, installing a brass nipple to continue the hose on. It's going to be going from the tank to that new water separator slash fuel filter. And then from the filter back to the lift pump and then from the lift pump to the engine. The OEM filter up here that goes from the lift pump to the engine that's going to stay where it's at and i'm going to that i actually just replaced so i'm just going to leave that where it's at i have no problems with that filter and the issues is always the one that goes from the tank to the lift pump because you get the most debris and sediment inside the tank and that's why that filter clogs underneath the tractor the, the most and on top of it it's in the worst place it can possibly be at so this is why people do this mod so better filtration you'll have water separation you can actually keep an eye on it with the glass bowl you can see if you got water in it you can drain it there's a few other things i have in the works of this tractor and we'll get to that in the next upcoming videos we'll be talking a little bit more about it so you guys stay tuned if you're interested in this kind of stuff as far as the hst pedal adjustment goes i hope it helps somebody and as always don't forget to like and subscribe thanks